Hey, I'm John Cannell, and today on Preppy Kitchen, we're making an easy and delicious pumpkin cake. So let's get started. First off, set your oven to 350, and now in a large bowl, I'm adding two cups or 240 grams of all-purpose flour. I also want two teaspoons of baking powder, and two, and one teaspoon of baking soda. You can have fun and play with the spices in this, so feel free to adjust, but I love two teaspoons of cinnamon, one and a half teaspoons of ground ginger, and a quarter teaspoon of freshly grated nutmeg. You could use powdered nutmeg as well. Some other additions you could add in here would be a half teaspoon of allspice, you could add a quarter teaspoon of cardamom. Any of your favorite fall spices would be lovely in this. And finally, one teaspoon of salt. I love using a sea salt for this, it's nice and mild. Iodized salt, it's very salty salt. So if you're using something like that or fine table salt, I would go down to three quarters or even half a teaspoon. Sift it up. Whenever you have spices, especially ginger, it's a good idea to sift things out because they tend to clump up. And while ginger is lovely in small doses, nobody wants a big mouthful of powdered ginger. And I almost forgot 300 grams or one and a half cups of granulated sugar. That gets whisked in at the end. Although I will say from personal experience, if you forgot and added the sugar and at the very end, the cake still turns out. It's that foolproof. Now our scale is, oh, didn't fall. Now our scale is done, whisk that sugar in. This cake is so easy and it's really like a nice stir together one where you can make it with little ones in the kitchen and have a good time. And this comes later, but there is this luscious cream cheese frosting that gets slathered all over the top. It's so good. This gets set aside and we can go on to our wet ingredients. Of course, we need pumpkin puree for this. If you're making your own pumpkin puree at home, good, I love that. Make sure it's really well processed so it's nice and smooth and it shouldn't be too watery. If you're buying it like I am today, I love using Libby. It has a beautiful color, taste, and texture. Not paid, I just wanted to share. Some of the private label brands are kind of like, just not the nice color, it's a little bit too watery, and the taste is just not as nice. And I would hate for you to make a delicious cake but be undermined by your ingredients. Mm -mm, not on my watch. That's 15 ounces or 425 grams. I'm also adding in four room temperature eggs. You do not want to have ice cold ingredients going into your cake batter. They don't mix up as well and your cake isn't going to bake up as nicely. The batter should be totally room temperature or even warm in some cases. And that way the center will be done and the edges won't be burnt. Four beautiful large eggs. I want one cup or 240 mils of veggie oil. And if you wanted to, you don't have to use veggie oil. It could be another light, flavorless oil. Avocado oil, you could use like rapeseed oil. You could even use olive oil if you wanted to. It will have the slightest olive oil texture to it, or flavor to it, but very slight. You only notice it when you're making the cake, not when you're eating it. And of course, I want two teaspoons of a nice vanilla extract. This one is homemade. It's so exciting to use your own vanilla extract. Try it out. We're gonna whisk this up until it is nice and smooth. Let's break those egg yolks up. All the fun flavors are in the dry ingredients, the ginger, the nutmeg, the cinnamon. What we end up here with is a nice, beautiful mixture that's full of water. The pumpkin really retains moisture and it is a magical ingredient that gives you a pillowy, soft cake. It's good for cupcakes, cakes, and I have a pumpkin chocolate chip cookie on the blog and on the channel that is so good. It is such a good cookie. Oh my gosh. Come take a look at this color. It's really pretty. But look at that. So nice. So I'm supposed to pour the wet into the dry, but I mixed up my bowls. This was too small for that, but you can pour the dry into the wet and it won't make any difference. So pour the dry into the wet or vice versa. Now you're gonna stir it together until just combined. Before, you could have whisked the flour forever. You could have whisked the dry ingredients for as long as you want. Here, we're gonna be very gentle and mix it up just until the flour disappears. If you overmix any cake batter, you will activate the gluten, which is a protein in the flour. And what happens is you bake your cake, bread, or cookies. It looks perfect coming out of the oven, but as it cools, it begins to shrink down. 
And when you take a bite of it, instead of being melt in your mouth and amazing, it's a little bit gummy and dense. And you're like, oh, what did I do wrong? I followed the instructions to a T. But the problem was you may have slightly overmixed the batter or very much overmixed it. And it totally changes the texture and makes it really unpleasant. I've had cakes that were fought, like done perfectly, grams and everything, but they just got way overmixed and they're <sighs> it's not good. <laughs> It'll break your heart. It's just not tasty. That's another reason I love doing this part by hand because I have really good control. I can scrape the bottom as I go and I know that I'm not gonna overmix. That's the end of my TED talk on mixing your batter. <laughs> All right, that looks really nice. I also have a nine by 13 inch dish. You can butter and flour it. You can spray it with baking spray or you can line it with parchment paper. This lets you take the cake out really easily so it doesn't have to be stuck in your baking tin. I love to like have it out on a serving plate or a cutting board or something and not like have this kind of like beat up metal tin that I take to the table. Pour the batter into your prepared pan. And by the by, if you wanted to add some extra things in at the very end, some toasted pecans or walnuts, maybe some chocolate chips, even crystallized ginger, those are all gonna be tasty things that'll add something extra. Someone told me that pumpkins and blueberries go together really well, but <laughs> you'll have to come up and like share a dessert with me. I'm not gonna make it. Add a principle. Give your pan a little shimmy and smooth the batter out to the edges. It should be nice and flat. Just give this batter a nice smooth so it doesn't have to level out by itself too much in the oven. My cake is ready to go into the oven 350 for about half an hour or until a skewer inserted in the middle comes out clean. In the meantime, we're gonna make a luscious cream cheese frosting. In the bowl of your stand mixer fitted with a paddle attachment or a big bowl if you're using a hand mixer, we're gonna make this frosting starting with three quarters of a cup or 170 grams of room temperature unsalted butter. Cream that up for just a minute or two to get it started. I also have eight ounces or 226 grams of cream cheese and it's in a bowl because I softened it in the microwave. It was too hard and it's really annoying to have little clumps of cream cheese mixed into your frosting. So let's microwave it at half power for 30 seconds to soften it up so it's nice and pliable. Cream cheese can go in now. Along with a nice pinch of salt. And if you're a little bit tired of having plain old delicious amazing cream cheese frosting and you want something extra, you can take the butter, brown it, just cook it down until it has a beautiful caramel color, let it come back to room temperature so it's solid, and then use that. And you'll have a beautiful nutty depth of flavor and some little specks throughout. It looks really pretty. I'm gonna cream this up on medium speed for about two minutes so the butter and cream cheese are really nicely mixed and then we'll add the powdered sugar. This looks so good already. Scrape your bowl down. And now I'm gonna add three cups of powdered sugar. You can do it all in one batch or add them in multiple batches if you want. Give that a mix, starting on low so there's no powdered sugar explosion nonsense happening. And in the meantime, you can add two teaspoons of vanilla extract. The vanilla and cream cheese are a match made in heaven. Once all the sugar is incorporated, Change your speed to medium or medium high and whip it up for about a minute until it's nice and fluffy. You should give the bowl one more scrape down afterwards because there's definitely some unmixed nonsense on the bottom. Following my own advice, of course. Okay. One more mix. And by the way, we're not building a cake here, it's a sheet cake, so if you want to have less powdered sugar, you can use less, it's totally fine. If you wanna have more, you can add more. It's a really easy recipe to switch up to your taste. That looks beautiful. Now it's time to ice our cake. I let my cake cool in the pan. Now it's time to decorate it, but I wanna show you uh, the wondrous amazingness of using parchment paper. Easy cleanup, transfers right away, and you have built-in handles. Mm -hmm. Okay, scoop that frosting up. I love to use a triggered scoop for this, so it just plops right on and you get even distribution. Sometimes you can have cakes that are very, very delicate and you, you don't wanna tug at them. This frosting is like softer than you could ever imagine, so it's not gonna tug at the cake, but it can happen. And it's really fun to do. And now for the fun part, use your offset spatula and swoop away. This is like the best part of the recipe, even better than the scooping, so. Add your nice swoops and have some fun. That looks perfect to me. 
If you want, you can decorate these with little pumpkin candies on top or a sprinkle of pumpkin spice or cinnamon looks nice too. Give it a cut and you're ready to enjoy. That is a pumpkin cloud. It is so soft and fluffy, topped with the luscious cream cheese frosting. It's really a must make recipe and it was so easy too. I hope you get a chance to make this recipe and if you like this video, check out my pumpkin playlist.